Belandra Beach is the perfect day trip from Cabo San Lucas and I want to show you exactly how you can visit it and why you're missing out if you skip it on your next vacation. Belandra Beach is consistently rated as one of Mexico's most beautiful beaches and after witnessing it in person I can easily see why. The water was as crystal clear as it gets, way more stunning than all the beaches in Cabo combined. Despite its beauty, there is a lot of planning involved to visit this area and you'll want to do everything right to ensure a successful and safe trip. In this video, I will share all the essential things you need to know, what activities to do while you're there, tips on how to not get bitten by the stingrays, and what I'd do differently if I had to do it all over again. So sit back, relax, and grab a pen and paper. This is your ultimate guide to Belandra Beach. First off, I want to show you why Belandra Beach is highly regarded as a bucket list destination. So I'm going to start off highlighting three activities you can do there to have an epic time. Activity number one is the most popular thing to do in Belandra, and that is to see kayak. What's cool about kayaking here is you can kayak from the main beach to any of the other beaches around the bay, of which there are seven total. And if you're lucky, you can have an entire beach to yourself. That's exactly what we did. We went straight across the bay, which took about 10 minutes, and then lounged on the beach, which we enjoyed all to ourselves. While it's quite the workout on your arms, and for whatever reason, I felt it a lot in my hip flexors, it was well worth the effort, and honestly, just a super cool thing to do. Here's a couple of tips on sea kayaking. Tip number one, only kayak during high tide. The water at Belanger is shallow to begin with, and at low tide it's even shallower, making it nearly impossible to kayak. Tip number two, bring cash and be open to negotiating the price. Renting kayaks is cash only. The rate we were given was 400 pesos for an hour or 300 pesos for half an hour. We only had 350 pesos on us, about 20 US dollars, and the vendor was cool with that which shows that they were flexible on the price. So in hindsight, I feel like we could have brought the price even lower. Also, if you wanna spend more than an hour with the kayaks, I'm sure you can negotiate a price that works for you and them. One hour is really only enough time to explore one beach. And if kayaking isn't your thing, you can also rent a paddleboard. Activity number two is go on a hike. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I don't want to hike, I just want to relax at the beach, I don't want to do anything strenuous. If that's your prerogative, that's cool, but I will tell you, you will be sorely missing out on some incredible views if you skip the hike. At the very least, you can make the very short hike slash walk, not even a quarter mile round trip that starts near the parking lot. Once at the lookout, you can enjoy panoramic views of the main Blondra beach to your left, and another beach to your right. 99% of visitors only hike up to here and then return straight back to the parking lot. But if you are the 1% like me, who's a little more on the adventurous side, let me show what else you can do if you continue hiking. So you're at the hill that everyone goes to and you see this sign. There's actually a trail behind this sign that continues onward. You can follow this easy mark trail and see more great views along the way among the cacti filled desert sea landscape. One of the most iconic features of Belanja Beach is called Mushroom Rock. It's actually not at the main beach. You have to walk to the beach just north of the main one. We didn't check it out because I saw pictures of it online and it just seemed like a cool looking rock, nothing more, nothing less. But if rocks are your thing, feel free to check it out. Okay, so we're doing a hike at Belanja Bay and we made it to this uh, vantage point here which arguably is better than the first one you see on the hike because there's this beautiful beach secluded no one's there at all versus the other beaches definitely more crowded so if you have the time definitely hike over here we're gonna try to get down there but we didn't really see a trail we'll try to find one i later found out that this beach is called tecolotito beach and it was the highlight of the entire hike Unlike the main beach that must have had over 100 people, Tecolotito Beach was deserted. We had the entire beach to ourselves and walked along it for about half an hour. Here's a couple tips on the hike. Tip number one, bring tennis or hiking shoes and flip-flops. 
The hike is a bit rocky and you want shoes with good traction, especially when going down to Tecolotito Beach. It was steeper than I anticipated and the rock is a bit loose. Then when you get to the beach, you can change into your flip flops. Tip number two, download the trail on all trails. This was my biggest mistake. I forgot to download the trail map before we had left and because there's no signal at Belanger Beach, I couldn't access the map. So I was kind of guessing where to go based on my memory, which cost us some time. I've linked the trail in the description box below. It's the most popular trail to do at Belanger Beach. There are also other trails on the other side of the bay that look amazing, so feel free to look into that as well. Activity number three, relax at the beach. This is an obvious tip. Of course you wanna relax at the beach, but let me give you some tips on how to relax even better. Tip number one, claim a palapa. If you get to the beach super early, then you can claim one of the 20 or so palapas by placing your stuff there. It was a mad dash to the palapas after people parked, so be prepared. We didn't get one because we were too slow apparently. I didn't know you had to run, but it's okay. If you miss the palapa, you can also rent an umbrella and chairs, so it's no big deal. Tip number two, if you want maximum relaxation and chill time, I would just choose one of the two between kayaking and hiking. I wouldn't do both. You only get four hours at Belandra Beach with their current time slot system. For instance, it took us about two and a half hours to complete the hike and an hour to kayak, which only left the half hour to chill. Ultimately, you just need to prioritize what you want to do and see to make the most of your trip. Now that we've talked about what you can do at Belandra Beach, let's discuss what you need to know to plan a successful trip. Since the start of COVID, Belanger Beach has implemented a time slot system. Initially, this was done to limit the amount of people entering the area to help with social distancing. Over time, however, authorities decided to keep the system to prevent overcrowding and help preserve and protect this natural area. There are two four-hour time slots and only the first 450 people for each slot are allowed to enter. The morning slot is from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and the afternoon slot is from 1 p.m to 5 p.m. Because there is a limit to how many people can enter, it's advised to get to the beach an hour to a half hour early, particularly for the morning slot to ensure you get in. Let's say you go in the morning and think you can sneak your way into the afternoon slot by just staying on the beach. Think again because the beach staff are going to kick you out. But if you do want to stay longer, all you have to do is get back into your car, wait in the queue again, and return for the afternoon slot. Also, do not go on the first Sunday of the month because apparently that is a special locals only day. Unfortunately, there is no official website that provides updates on the current situation and restrictions at Belandra Beach, but as of the time of the recording of this video, I believe the system to be in place. There is no fee to enter or park your car. I've heard of people trying to scam tourists by telling you to buy some bracelet, but don't believe it. If you visit and hear of any changes, Please let us know down in the comments to help others with their plans and I will gladly update any of those changes in the description box below to help you guys out. Next, let's talk about something very important, transportation. Belanger Beach is a two and a half hour drive from Cabo San Lucas. It's near the town of La Paz, which is the capital of Baja California Sur. To get to Belanger from Cabo, you can either book a tour or rent a car. I highly recommend renting a car because it will give you the most flexibility and freedom during your visit. When I was planning, my main concern was safety. I literally googled, is it safe to drive from Cabo to La Paz? The internet said it's completely safe to drive during the day, but to avoid driving at night because there are roaming cattle from farms along the highway, specifically Highway 19 via Todos Santos. The problem was I wanted to get to Belanger Beach early in the morning, but that required driving in the dark. I didn't want to hit some random cow and somehow be stranded in a foreign country. And to be honest, I was very, very close to calling off the entire trip to Belandra. But after we talked to our guide from an ATV tour we took earlier that week, he assured us it should be completely fine to drive during the dark and advised us to just drive a bit slower. Plus, the morning glow before the actual sunrise should help brighten up the road. Ultimately, we listened to his advice, we made the trip, and we're so thankful we did. Despite the initial nerves I had, the drive wasn't bad at all. Pretty smooth, except for speed bumps when you're driving through the towns. 
We just drove from Cabo San Lucas, left around 5.15, and then we made it here to Belandra Beach around 7.42. So about like a two and a half hour drive. I was nervous about making it because they only allow 450 people into the first slot between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. But it seems like we're the 10th car to arrive. So there's only 10 cars or nine cars in front of us. And we're about to enter right at eight o'clock. Lastly, I want to talk about what i do differently if I had to do the trip all over again by sharing three mistakes that I made that you will want to avoid. Mistake number one is we did not bring any water shoes. At Belandra Beach, there are stingrays and these stingrays lurk in the sand and the shallow water. When we were waiting in our car to enter, one of the beach personnel advised us to do what's called the Belandra Shuffle. When you're in the water, instead of normal walking, you want to shuffle your feet. Don't pick up your feet, shuffle your feet. The shuffling is to disturb the stingrays so they don't sting you. I think water shoes would give you that extra layer of protection to reduce the chances of being stung. This is particularly important if you want to walk along the sandbars. Which brings me to mistake number two. We did not plan the trip around low tide and therefore did not have the opportunity to see or walk along the sandbars. When the water is shallow, these swirling sandbars appear in the bay and it looks super picturesque and dreamy. If I were to do it all over again, I would have picked a day that was closer to low tide because only then do the infamous sandbars reveal themselves. I have linked a website that shows the times for low and high tide for your convenience, so feel free to use that. And lastly, mistake number three, we went to Belandra Beach during our all-inclusive stay. This was a huge oversight on my part. We felt pressure to get back to the hotel as soon as possible to take advantage of the amenities and food there. Had we booked our trip during our non-all-inclusive stay, we would have more time to explore La Paz. And something we didn't do that I recommend is to check out nearby Tecolote Beach for lunch and then explore the city of La Paz before driving back to Cabo San Lucas. That way you make it a more complete day trip, checking out the area since you're there already. So that was my ultimate guide to Belandra Beach. I want to personally thank you so much if you made it this far in the video and hope you found it helpful. Make sure to subscribe to not miss out on my future content. I have a series of videos I'm going to release very soon on my recent trip to Cabo, including a full six day itinerary detailing each day of the trip, a guide to seeing the famous Cabo Arch or El Arco, and a video on an incredible hike we did to the top of Mount Solmar. Also, this is my second video on this channel and I would appreciate it so, so much if you give my first video some love. At the time of this recording, it has only gotten 9 views and I spent a lot of effort on it. So if you love hiking, just love travel in general, you need to put Big Pine Lakes on your bucket list. Please check the video out. Okay, happy travel planning and see you in the next adventure.